I hope you are enjoying the event. My name is Tekla Mbunge and I'm a senior research analyst with a research firm Omnia. So I'll be your moderator for this session. And uh, we're going to look into 5G initiatives in, 5G, uh, in, in East Africa and beyond, and more specifically, 5G viability and also impact on the industry. I'm joined by Kenichi Okeleke from the GSMA. Kenichi, how are you? Very well, Tekla. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Kenichi. So before we kick off the conversation, we're briefly going to look at some uh, numbers I have extracted uh, from uh, Omdia Research and uh, some numbers about how um, 5G is performing across East Africa and Africa as well. So as we can see here, we had, uh, as at, let's say, 2021, um, well, we're only, we, we didn't have any 5G actually across East Africa. And we can see that 3G and 4G are still the dominant technologies with uh, over 160 million combined subscriptions in uh, 2021. We forecast that uh, 5G is going to, uh, to, to grow over the next five years, but we retain a very small market share, uh, reaching 17 million by uh, subscription, sorry, by 2026. And if we look at Africa as a whole, uh, we project that uh, 5G subscriptions uh, will um, will also uh, not, inc not uh, exceed uh, 20 million by uh, 2026. If we look at the deployment across Africa, and uh, well, across Africa and East Africa, we've seen that we're really at uh, at a very early stage, and uh, we've had as at um, now actually only launches in uh, in Southern Africa. Essentially, we have a, a few trials going on in um, in Kenya for East Africa, uh, in Mali and Togo for um, for West Africa, in uh, in Cote d'Ivoire as well and uh, in uh, in Mozambique and Uganda and further spectrum or licenses have been issued early this year uh, in Nigeria, South Africa, but also in the Indian Ocean Islands of uh, Mauritius, Mayotte and Reunion Island. So uh, let's hear first from uh, our expert of today, Kelechi. Uh, about the current state of 5G. What do you think of these numbers or of uh, the current states now uh, in East Africa? Yeah, no, thank you so much, Declan, and thanks for, for sharing those, those numbers. So as, as we can see, you know, um, yes, 5G, a lot is being said, you know, about it at the moment. Uh, but when we look at um, commercial launches um, in East Africa, you know, uh, we just have, well, if we include, you know, the Seychelles in, in that region and perhaps, you know, Madagascar, well, Thelma, you know, has done something with Eric saying, you know, these are the only markets where we have seen um, commercial uh, 5G services. Um, the other countries, you know, um, we have seen announcements uh, for 5G trials. Perhaps the most notable one is Kenya, you know, where Safaricom um, a little over a year ago, you know, announced um, commercial 5G trials. And um, the expectation is that, you know, in the coming months or 
perhaps you know next year we could see full commercial 5g services launched in in kenya and you also you know mentioned um in your slides uganda um more recently ethiopia you know um Ethiopia telecom has announced plans to to do 5g trials um so you know, but beyond these countries, really, you know, uh, the rest of the sub-region, you know, has been fairly quiet, you know, um, about about 5G. Um, but look, let's see what happens, you know, in, in the coming years. But the current state, you know, as you as you asked, basically, you know, is that um, just a handful of commercial networks, you know, but a number of announcements, you know, have been made for 5G trials, and these could translate into commercial networks in the coming years. Right. So in terms of growth, do you see like more a momentum building or uh, do you think that it is slow at the moment and it's going to remain so over the next five years, let's say? Yeah, um, I, I think it's a mixed bag. If we look at the last couple of years, you know, with the pandemic, uh, now what that did was to kind of like show people the need for enhanced connectivity and i would say it even you know and um, drove demand you know for for better connectivity people moving up to to 4g and people saying look if 5g were available you know in my market i would definitely get a 5g you know subscription so it highlighted you know that potential that 5g could have in the region but when it comes to actual network launches i i will say it's been slow. Okay, um, we haven't seen that move the way we thought it could happen. Um, let's say in the first two to three years of this decade, there are a number of reasons for that. Uh, perhaps mm -hmm. one of them is the fact that at the moment there is more focus on, you know, moving two G and three G customers onto four G especially as operators have invested a lot in their 4G networks and there's still a lot of capacity, 4G capacity that haven't been used yet. You know, so there's a lot of focus on moving 2G and 3G customers onto 4G. And while that is still the main, you know, challenge for operators, you know, uh, putting money into 5G, you know, one could say might have, you know, gone to the back seat as it were um beyond that you know it is the fact that a 5g ecosystem in africa and by that i mean you know content um devices use cases is still very much nascent okay so even if the networks were built um the customers may not be able to afford the devices you know to to use those services or may not you know have the content you know, available to make them want to use 5G, you know, given that 4G at the moment is sufficient for most of the things people, you know, um, require connectivity for. Um, so in a nutshell, um, you know, in the last two years, uh, momentum has been slow. However, you know, with the announcements we're seeing, you know, it's very likely going to pick up in the coming years and, and that will very much be interesting to watch. Okay, so one, one of the challenges that you said, uh, all the reasons why 5G was not picking up though so fast, you mentioned all the costs in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, devices for the customers, also the cost of rolling out mm -hmm. for, uh, for the telcos, and how can, it, how can 5G be commercially viable for operators? So 5G commercial viability, obviously, you know, that's the million dollar question, to be honest, not just in Africa, you know, but everywhere around the world, everybody is talking about 5G viability, how is 5G going to be commercially viable, especially as it's going to be expensive to deploy. Okay, no, no two ways about it. And it's going to be expensive to um, modernize, you know, um, existing infrastructure you know, and, and roll out, you know, um, um, new infrastructure that will be required, you know, for, for 5G. Um, but how are operators going to make money, you know, from, from it? Well, the first thing to point out, right, is that, yes, the consumer market is very important. You know, um, it has largely been, you know, the, the largest user of telecom services, 2G, 3G, and even 4G. It's mainly been consumer focused, as it were, you know, for operators, you know, but beyond that, and, and we're seeing this in other regions, you know, is that 5G will mostly be an enterprise technology. 
you know, um, um, and there, there are there are a num number of reasons for this. First, you know, as I mentioned previously, you know, 4G can meet the connectivity needs of most people, you know, at the moment. Um, but then 5G itself comes with additional capabilities, okay, um, such as ultra low latency, you know, such as faster speeds, and and these capabilities can be leveraged, okay, to to develop uh, new solutions for enterprises. You know, around the world we're hearing a lot about enterprise digitization, about industry 4.0, you know, a number of those solutions, you know, will require the kind of connectivity and performance that only 5G can provide, you know, and um, with that in mind, it, you begin to see, you know, that in Africa and elsewhere, um, the commercial viability of 5G will rely a lot, you know, on operators' ability to, you know, um, come up with use cases and services that can serve industries, that can serve enterprises, you know, um, in, in their regions. Um, you know, elsewhere, we've seen a whole lot of 5G labs, okay, being developed, um, you know, we haven't seen much of that in Africa. Um, I think this is going to be very crucial, you know, in the coming years, you know, to, to, to come up with forums where operators and, and enterprises and other stakeholders can identify those solutions that 5G can address and beyond identifying those those um, those those challenges, but come up, you know, with with solutions and use cases and applications that can be used to address those issues. And I think, you know, when that begins to happen, we'll probably see um, the use case, the business case for five G become, um, you know, more encouraging as it were, you know, for operators. Um, but yeah, relying entirely on the consumer market, which has so far sustained the mobile industry to date, is probably not going to cut it for 5G. Okay. So my, my, my next question was about what could be done to develop uh, the necessary uh, use cases to drive 5G. Mm. Uh, you, you already mentioned uh, developing 5G hubs or 5B, 5G labs, mm -hmm. which, as you said, are not... Uh, it's not such a, a common trend in Africa. Do you see any other um, uh, other initiatives that can, uh, can can be done to drive five G? Well, maybe I'll take a step back and um, say maybe the first place to start is actually to increase awareness of the potential of five G mm -hmm. among enterprises. Mm -hmm. um, you know. As, as part of our research, you know, we, 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 we conduct a lot of surveys, um, but it's interesting to note, uh, both in those surveys and also from anecdotal evidence, you know, talking to people from other industries, that not many people, well, one, understand mm -hmm. the potential of 5G, secondly, realize that it can actually you know, um, help them in various operations, various, you know, um, areas of, of, of their businesses, you know, so the very first thing to do, you know, is to create that awareness, um, um, you know, among enterprises in the region to say, you know, yes, these are the ways you have been operating, but we are moving into industry 4.0, we're moving into an era where um, we're going to see a lot of digitalization happening in industries and 5G will be a key enabler of those solutions. Now, when that awareness has been created, I think, you know, that could then lead to perhaps more collaboration, okay, between operators and, um, and enterprises. Uh, today, you know, how do operators relate with enterprises? Perhaps it's just to sell them connectivity right, to sell them 4G, to sell them fixed broadband, and, and that is it, you know. There is need to go beyond those basic, um, what you might want to call bread and butter operator services, okay, and begin to look into more solutions, you know, that end, that, that operators can provide enterprises, big IoT, you know, solutions, um, or if it's in the manufacturing, you know, sector bait solutions that, you know, enable them to, to begin to use, you know, smart manufacturing, you know, solutions, um, you know, so, yeah, I, I will say um, awareness and then active collaboration, you know, to, to um, 
identify and develop you know those those use cases and maybe if i'm to narrow it down more to the region you know specifically um maybe begin to identify which are those sectors okay that are going to benefit immensely from you know the solutions that 5g could enable okay agriculture is big you know, in, in the region, in some parts, you know, of 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 um of, of East Africa, and maybe the wider Africa, you have extractive industries. Okay, mm -hmm. education, health. Okay, so um, I think you know we should be going into a time where, you know, we we probably see the mobile industry work more closely. You know, with these industries and in, in other sectors. Okay, to see how um you know 5g especially you know can help them address a number of, of solutions and sorry number of challenges you know that they face with innovative solutions beyond just connectivity okay and now uh, if we look at beyond connectivity let's look at the um, well the ecosystem the whole ecosystem and uh, more specifically regulations and uh, government intervention what mm -hmm. is the role of uh, of government in ensuring that uh, 5G projects will remain or be commercial uh, commercially viable. Yeah, no, that, that's that's um, you know, really a good question to address because at the end of the day, you know, governments you know have a big role um, to play in in this area. We have seen a lot of activities by governments in other regions. And perhaps, you know, I may want to answer the question from that perspective. Um, so governments can either come in from the, you know, supply side, which is building the networks, or from the demand side, you know, which is helping, um, you know, consumers or enterprises, you know, to use um, th those services that have come up. And so if we look at the supply side, you know, the very first thing governments can do really is to ease the burden of infrastructure deployment. Okay. And so whether that is by encouraging innovative, you know, deployment solutions, for example, in China, you know, we have seen the government, you know, allow um, operators to share, you know, to the 5G networks as it were, which has pretty much reduced the cost, not only reducing the cost of deployment, but also helping to accelerate, you know, um, network deployment, 5G network deployment, you know, in, in China. And, and right now, you know, a vast majority of, of the population have been covered by 5G networks. Governments also have a role to play around spectrum. Okay, um, spectrum is, is obviously vital for any mobile network. You can't talk about mobile without talking about spectrum. So spectrum is vitally, you know, important. So governments have a role, you know, to play, make, making sure that spectrum is available and is also, you know, affordable. And also cutting red tape, you know, um, around network deployments. In Africa, we know issues like right of way, you know, remain a big challenge, right? So when 5G deployment starts, you know, um, operators shouldn't spend a lot of money trying to you know to get that government should try to make sure you know that it's easy for operators to to deploy you know the 5g network so those are some of the areas really you know that um you know governments can and i think perhaps should play a role you know in easing the deployment of 5g so that's on the supply side but very quickly on the demand side we have seen in europe for example the eu you know france and some other um, um countries in, in the region have created funds to accelerate the research you know into mm -hmm. into use cases particularly for enterprises okay um we talked about 5g labs it, it might be you know perhaps governments have a role to play in creating that forum for operators and enterprises to come together you know maybe that's the model that's going to work you know in in africa you know but creating that opportunity where we can see those conversations happening um, that would eventually drive you know the development of, of those use cases that will drive the demand for 5g adoption because without the use cases there's really no point you're just going to build it and nobody will use it okay yeah so i think governments you know also have a role in making sure that those use cases are available okay and have you seen uh, governments in east africa um, approaching or taking supporting or pushing specific initiatives 
uh, for the 5G opportunity? Uh, okay, yeah, so East Africa, maybe the first thing to point out is not many governments in, in the region, um, unfortunately, have fully articulated their 5G plans, okay, the same way you will see clear roadmaps in, in more developed markets, for example, you know, so, um, however, there are some, some good examples to, to highlight. In, in the region. I think Kenya stands out, obviously. Um, they've just, you know, announced, you know, the Safaricom um, has been, you know, allocated spectrum in the 2.6 gigahertz band, okay, which is really important for their plans to, to deploy full commercial 5G, you know, services. You know, so yes, you know, one could argue that for many governments, you know, the focus, you know, has really been on digital inclusion, getting people connected in the first place, okay? And the risk that, oh, if they begin to focus on 5G, some people who haven't even been connected to 2 or 2G or 3G are gonna be left behind, okay? However, as we go into this decade, um, yeah, I, I think we're gonna see more examples of governments coming out with clear roadmaps, you know, for 5G. Um, Kenya are a good example, and I think more are probably gonna follow suit in the coming Yes. Sorry, I was on mute. Okay. Thank you. And a last point uh, your forecast, what changes uh, should we expect in the, in the sub region, in the sub region's 5G landscape over the next five years? Yeah, over the next five years. In terms of use cases, I would yeah, say, rather than public subscriptions, yeah. Yeah, I mean, if, if I had a crystal ball, that would have been an easy one to answer, uh, but I'll try my best. <laughs> so, well, I, I think the first thing we're going to say, I think the, the, the numbers you showed, okay, um, make that clear. Perhaps from 2023, okay, um, we'll probably see that change in terms of deployment, first of all, right? We're probably going to see more, more networks come to, um, to you know, commercial services in the region, in East Africa, for example, this is likely going to happen in Kenya, um, you know, um, perhaps it, yeah, where it, it, the come has said maybe 23 MTA in Uganda. So, you know, I would say in the next 12 months, okay, or a little more than that, 12 to 18 months, we're going to see more networks come to, mm -hmm. you know, uh, being launched um, in the region. So, so that would be good, you know, to see. Now, in terms of use cases, um, that's perhaps the more difficult one, you know, to answer. Perhaps, you know, the low hanging fruit, you know, the use case we're going to see in the in the short term will be fixed wireless access, right? That makes a lot of sense for so many reasons. One, broadband connections, broadband fixed broadband connections you know, are very, very um, underdeveloped in the region, yet people, mm -hmm. you know, are beginning to consume more data. So, you know, fixed wireless access would be an easy use case, a low hanging fruit for operators to roll out. So we should see, you know, a lot of folks on 5G WA. Uh, beyond that, um, there is still a lot of work, you know, to do. Um, Africa has a very vibrant, innovative um, tech startup ecosystem. Um, perhaps, you know, um, they will take the bull by the horns and, and begin to, you know, develop some new cases in the consumer sphere, in the consumer area that we utilize 5G connectivity. So, you know, so we probably should see that um, happen over the next five years. Uh, but back to the enterprise, you know, um, uh, segment, and I think I will end up there. You know, I, I think, you know, that we're going to see that push really um, to, to bring operators and, and industries together, you know, to come up with use cases that are relevant for Africa. We have seen a lot of use cases, you know, being developed in other parts of the world, but what is relevant for Africa, that is really going to be very important to have. Okay. Thank you. So, uh, well, that, that was quite a few points and uh, quite interesting conversation, actually, because uh, now we can see that 5G uh, is no longer a hype word, or a hot topic. We see, we've seen 5G becoming a reality uh, over the past year across Africa, well, across Africa in just a few points. And uh, if I can sum up a few things that, uh, a few of the lot of things that you said, we can say that we are still 
uh, in um, at a very early stage, 5G will still remain um, um, a minority or a small share of uh, the telcos or the telecom networks connections uh, in the um, in the short term. The, the main reason, or a few of the main reasons, are that. Uh, 3G migration is still going on, 3G migration to 4G, and uh, telcos are still uh, or still need to leverage from their existing 4G networks. Uh, in terms as well of affordability, 5G uh, ecosystem is still nascent, so therefore uh, 5G devices are still uh, at a high price for the African uh, 5G or potential 5G consumers and also content is not always available. The consumer market is a, is a big one in, a, in Africa as well, but uh, according to what you said, uh, Keleti, 5G will uh, have to essentially start targeting the enterprise segment. And um, that, is mean, that, that means that we have to increase awareness uh, among the enterprise users and uh, telcos will need to go beyond just selling connectivity to enterprises uh, by partnering with relevant content providers based on the enterprise's activity. You mentioned IoT for smart factories, for, in, uh, for, for instance, and telcos and all the, stake, uh, the, stake play, the stakeholders in uh, the 5G ecosystem will also need to start identifying the sectors which will benefit uh, from 5G and work closely with, uh, with the relevant companies. We also need more incentive and uh, from the government and uh, one of the government's main role is to make sure that Spectrum is available and also uh, affordable, cutting red tape challenges as well. And as you mentioned, uh, it happens in some other markets, especially in Europe, creating maybe funds uh, to accelerate the 5G uh, development. One, in terms of use cases, we've mentioned earlier on the enterprise, but um, we think that in the next 12 months, the uh, most used case will be fixed wireless access for both the enterprise and also the high-end consumer segment. Thank you very much for uh, joining us. Skeleti, stay tuned. We stay tuned. I also stay tuned as well because we're now going to uh, take questions from uh, the audience. So. Um, please send your questions in the in the chat.